Now, I will um, give a little warning that this story is about the uh, sexual assault allegations that Tara Reid um, has uh, uh, put on Joe Biden, I think is the right way to say it. Uh, Joe Biden is basically being accused of sexually assaulting Tara Reid back in 1993, if you don't know the story. Um, so there are going to be some touchy themes throughout the story. Um, and uh, if if at any point things become uncomfortable or anything, feel free to tune out, take a break, and come back later. Totally cool, 100% understandable. Um, or, or or if you don't want to come back because it got it, it you know I I completely understand that um, as well. But I just wanted to to you know let let you know that that's since that's sort of the topic that we're talking about. I know. Uh, that can be kind of a, a touchier, a touchier subject, uh, and uh, let, you know we'll, we'll we'll see where 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 this goes. Um, so I want to start with the fact that, let, like, kind of a little bit of a recap of basically what happened. Uh, Tara Reid, who was a former um, former staffer uh, under Joe Biden, uh, has accused him of uh, sexually assaulting her. I'm not going to go into the, the the specific details because they are a little graphic. Uh, but I encourage you guys to check out the Katie Halper interview that she did. Uh, Katie Halper is a fantastic progressive comedian and journalist. Uh, on the Katie Halper show, she did an interview uh, recounting the exact details of what happened. Uh, very good interview. Check that out. And um, she was on The Hill Rising with Crystal Ball and Sagar and Jetty. Also very good interview. And this came out uh, a little over a month ago. Like middle of March, it came out. Actually, when I started doing these daily videos, that was one of the first stories that I covered. Excuse me. Um, because it was kind of a big deal that this story came out. And, uh, and there was silence. There was silence from corporate media. There was silence from Biden campaign. There was silence from Biden himself. Um, and I mean, it blew up in the progressive circles, right? It super blew up in the progressive circles that this was that this was the story um and then once people started kind of talking about it they they levied a bunch of like oh this she's looking for attention she's a bernie supporter so you know we can't trust these allegations they're biased um and these were all like this was like Alyssa milano who was this like celebrity champion of the me too movement the believe all women you know kavanaugh is a rapist we have to believe christine blasey ford um, and then all of a sudden it comes to a Democrat getting sexual assault allegations thrown on them. And all of a sudden, those same people are saying, no, we can't believe this lady. She's an opportunist. Um, you know, Joe Biden is great. He's a good guy. Look at he, He's great. He's a good dude. Uh, when when you look at his record, you look at the way that he treated Anita Hill, uh, where it was a black woman, um, you know, being grilled by a panel of older white male senators um you know the way that he kind of addressed that you 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 look at uh, all of those uh, uncomfortable and inappropriate ways that he touches women um you know uh, that that there are plenty of photos of all over the place you look at the way that he just talks to people in general he's a very he's a very rude um arrogant angry old man is kind of what he is. You know, you, you look at somebody that comes up and asks him a challenging question and he gets flustered very quickly. Uh, he gets angry very quickly. Um, there's, uh, you know, records of all of that. There's videos of all of this. <laughs> there's videos that surface during the campaign trail when somebody asks him about, about uh, what are we going to do about these pipelines? You know, like, are, are we going to pull back on fossil fuels? Which I think is a very reasonable question to ask. And he basically goes, you know what? I'm not the guy for you. Go vote for somebody else. When he was in, he, when he was part of the Senate Judiciary Committee, uh, they talked to a UN uh, uh, weapons investigator during Iraq, and he treated this guy like total shit. He treats this guy like he's he's basically this like amateur noob that's coming out and being like, you know, just those people that are just like, we shouldn't, we shouldn't do this. Why? Well, we just shouldn't, right? Like he had a very, he had proof uh, that how America was dealing with Iraq, how America was dealing with um, 
this weapons of mass destru destruction allegations was not good. And Joe Biden treats this guy like he's an asshole. Like he talks down to him. He tells him that his opinion doesn't matter because he doesn't make enough money for his opinion to matter. These are all interviews that you can go check out. Like this is this is sort of who Joe Biden is, right? So I'm not a Joe Biden fan, but when I heard Tara's story, uh, I I believed it. I felt like it was a legitimate story that that I could believe. Uh, obviously, there needs to be an investigation done, um, and that is kind of what MSNBC is talking about. I'm also not a fan of MSNBC, right? Like if you've watched any of my shit, if you paid attention to anything that I've said for like the last five years, I am not a fan of corporate media. The three giant corporate news stations that are out there that are controlled by, by war profiteers, by the fossil fuel industry that have these narratives that are these, these, these monoliths of political theater than they are journalism. I don't like them, but they kind of did a fair job so far, I, I will say. I mean, it took them, what, like a month and a half to get to this point? Um, you know, and, and this is in the midst of people kind of freaking out on Tara Reid to be like, oh, she's a Putin puppet or whatever, because she took a Russian studies class and wrote fiction. Like, are you going to say that the people that wrote those movies where like the what if movies were like, what, ha what, what would have happened if Hitler would have won World War II? Or do you think those people are Nazis? Or do you think they're just like trying to take, do some creative storytelling? You know, like what if scenarios? Like that's what she wrote. And they're like, bah, McCarthyism, let's do that again. Over fucking nothing. <laughs> so um, there were two journalists on MSNBC recently uh, that I watched. Um, over the course of the week that kind of made some pretty fair statements, in my opinion. Uh, Chris Hayes, Chris Hayes basically pointed out saying that, hey, uh, sometimes, you know, people that we like uh, do bad things and we have to kind of accept that they are going to do bad things and we have to investigate what those bad things are and we have to talk about whether it's, it's right or wrong. Right. We have to do the investigation. And he just points out all the details that we already know. <clears throat> he points out um, what Tara said. He points out that the campaign initially did said nothing. Uh, and then the campaign said that she was a liar. That's what the campaign came out and said. Uh, I think in like maybe sometime in April, like middle of April, they were basically like, this is all bullshit. What's your evidence that this is all bullshit? It just is. That's what the Biden campaign said. Joe Biden didn't say shit. He just kind of kept quiet. Um, you know, he did what he did when Hillary Clinton was speaking and fell asleep on it. Just didn't say a goddamn thing. All these accusations get levied. Uh, Tara Reid has a bunch of corroborations from her neighbor, her brother. Her mother has called into Larry King around the same time, which she said uh, happened. Uh, why didn't she come out earlier? Well, because she respected Joe. She liked Joe. She was a she was a, a lifelong Democrat. She believed in the party. She didn't want to make this guy look bad. Maybe this was you know maybe it was a misunderstanding. Maybe he'll apologize for it. Uh, none of those fucking things happened. Right. And Chris Hayes points out all this. That's all he did. And he and he basically said, we have to look into this. We have to investigate this. And we can't just say that this person is one way or the other because we like a candidate. So all the people, all these Biden bros that are out there that like Joe Biden, that claim that he's the lesser of two evils, whatever it is, whatever their reason for it is. Um, that's nice. But at the end of the day. We have to be fair about this and we have to investigate into it. That's basically all Chris Hayes said, which is like, yeah, that's OK. This is not like a like this is not like a crazy statement where he was just like, I, I have the evidence. I am going to take on this case myself. Right. Like made a pretty reasonable statement. And everybody on Twitter said that they should fire Chris Hayes. Fucking crazy. Right. All, all because he said we should probably investigate Joe Biden. Now, 
to me, this is another example where innocent until proven guilty only applies to the rich and powerful, only applies when you're in a position like Joe Biden, right? When, when you're enough of a tool for the oligarchs, when you're enough of a tool for the donor class, or, uh, or, or you can be like a puppet for the fucking deep state. That only applies to the rich. It never applies to, to us, right? Like anytime, anytime you see an innocent black person get shot or killed by the police, there's a shit ton of people that come out and be like, well, you shouldn't have been doing something wrong in the first place. It's like, how do you know he was doing something wrong? Well, cops wouldn't have done that. Yeah, really? There's no record of cops just beating the shit out of people for no fucking reason? Really? Like, there's that's never happened in the history of policing, ever? <laughs> like, But it's his black or white thinking, right? Like, well, he's a Democrat. He's got to be a good guy. That's what Democrats are good people. That's why they're the blue. And then Republicans are evil. That's why they're the red, which is also the color of Satan. Like yeah, what what was the what's the old adage? The devil's greatest trick is to prove that he never existed in the first place. That's what they do, and in this case with Joe Biden, like it's not even innocent until proven guilty. It's innocent, and you take my word for it, and that's it. It's case closed, and we're fucking done. Right? Joe Biden's campaign, not even Joe Biden himself. Joe Biden's campaign came out and said, "No fucking way," and that's it. Case closed. We're done. It's done. Why are we even talking about this? Right? That's how that's how the oligarchs want this. That's how corporations, that's how all, all, all of the donor class want this to be. That's how Alyssa Milano wants this to be. Alyssa Milano came out and said Joe's innocent. What more do you want? What more do you want? The lady that played a witch on television for like nine years said, you know, the lady that played like a fictional character. And I don't think has done much of anything since. <laughs> I might be wrong. I don't know. I don't know Alyssa Milano's personal career. I just know her from Charmed. They don't even want to attempt to prove that he's innocent in this situation. And anybody that even says that we should attempt to investigate and see whether he's guilty or innocent is they're like, fucking get rid of this guy. Get him out of there. So that was Chris Hayes. Um, and the second one was, uh, Mika. I think it's Mika from Morning Joe. Uh, I think that's how you pronounce her name. I might be wrong. If, if, if I am wrong, I'm, I apologize. I hate when people like don't pronounce names properly because my name gets pronounced weird all the time and I've just kind of gotten used to it, but I always like try my best to, uh, pronounce people's names properly. So I think it's Mika. Um. She's uh, she's one of the uh, anchors on uh, Morning Joe, which uh, with Biden's declining mental state, uh, believes that it's a show kind of worshiping his record. Um, but she asked him a couple of very important questions. Now, the um, one of the one of the bigger things she brought up was Joe Biden's quote. Uh it's like during Dr. Ford's case, he came out and said, you know, it's important. Uh, believe women means that we believe the essence of what they're saying, right? So the essence of what Dr. Ford was saying is that Judge Kavanaugh raped her in the 80s. That was the essence of what she was saying. And he, and he basically said that we should believe the essence of that. The same thing is now being levied against Joe Biden. Tara Reid, the essence of what she's saying is that Joe Biden raped her in 1993. And Joe Biden is quoted to say that we should believe the essence of, but now he's like, no, but not this though. Like the essence of this is bullshit because it's about me. And you know, like Joe Biden's about to drop some bullshit whenever he, whenever he starts saying something, has a half second pause and goes, look, right? It's always just like, I, I, I said what I said. I, I know what I said. I, I think we should believe the, look, you know, uh, when I said that I was in a state where uh, there were a lot of people, uh, look, Mika, I want to let you know 
that, that's when you know, like, it's going to be a bunch of, like, blathering bullshit because his brain doesn't know how to, like, come up with an answer to, to the hypocrisy that he's being faced with. Believe the essence of what women say, except Tara Reid, who's a liar and uh, should not be believed about what she's saying about Biden, right? Like, that's, that's basically what Joe Biden is saying in this situation. And then he said there should be an investigation. People should look into it. And uh, that, uh, you know, the, the New York Times and another credible news source, uh, uh, you know, they, they did an investigation and uh, they found they found uh, no evidence, no evidence of this. Right now. Here's the thing. Um, New York Times is not as credible as you might think. They're kind of a bullshit paper. They're they're a corporate oligarch paper is basically what they are. Uh, New York Times talked to a couple of his former staffers uh, who said that they don't remember Tara. They don't remember a complaint being filed or any of those stuff. But Tara, the New York Times didn't talk to Tara herself, her neighbors, her family, or any of the people that have come out and corroborated Tara Reid's story. And I have also personally witnessed the New York Times lying about a certain situation to fit their fucking narrative. I've witnessed it personally, right? To come, uh, this was, holy crap, I'm trying to remember what year it was. 2018, maybe? 20, no, tw uh, 2017. Okay, this was about three years ago. I was opening for Lee Camp in New York City. The New York Times came out to do a story. Um, and so, you know, Lee basically said, like, uh, I only do live interviews because then it's a lot easier for the editors to kind of edit the story and make it sound like something it's not, which is something that people do, right? Like if you want to take a certain spin, um, that's kind of the thing that they do. So he invited him to the show and then he was like, you know, I'll, I'll try to talk to you as long as I, as long as, you know, you guys don't edit the shit that I say. Uh, and, so the dude comes, I met him, <laughs> he said hi, I took him to his, his comp seat, um, we started the show, there was like one guy during the show that was like super excited about Bernie that like got, you know, sort of yelling shit, and Lee just kind of was just like, hey man, we'll start the revolution after the show, but let me finish my show that everybody paid here, you know, paid to come see, and then afterwards, we'll fucking start the revolution, right? Like, he handled it very nicely, he didn't make the guy feel like a total dick, and then he kind of settled down. After the show, uh, at the same club, there was a Russian rapper that was booked to perform, right? It had nothing to do with the Lee Camp show, it, they, it just so happened that the late show was this Russian rapper. Uh, and this, uh, this writer lied about Lee handling the Bernie supporter, uh, came out and said, like, Lee, Lee made fun of the guy or something, which is not true. Um, and then he was like, out, so I, I tried to find Lee Camp, uh, but, uh, but he, just, he just disappeared. I, I don't know where he went, which is like, that's also not true. He announced that we were going to be up in the balcony selling merch, which is what we fucking do. After every show, I handle the merch table. I walk up and down the fucking aisle, ask people what they want, take their money. Like, I, I handle all that shit. Like, I was up there. There was like 120 people that were trying to get merch from Lee Camp. Now we're trying to get a photo, shake his hand, right? So this like one fucking reporter couldn't wait the 45 to an hour that it actually takes us to run through all that many people to ask Lee Camp some questions. And then he goes outside and he's like, and then I heard some big burly men. Hmm, Russia, right? Like that's basically what they did when it was like, there's a fucking rapper. There's a Russian rapper that came out. All you had to do was ask who the next act was. This is their reporting that the New York Times does. They don't actually do reporting. They do propaganda. That's what they fucking do. So the New York Times is not a credible goddamn source. They also fired Chris Hedges. They fired Chris Hedges because he was doing his job as a journalist too well. He was covering the Iraq war in an accurate way, and they fucking fired him. This is who the New York Times is. This is who Joe Biden is saying is a credible news source. Whew. I'm gonna take a I'm gonna take a minute to breathe. The New York Times is not an actual newspaper. They're they're the mouthpiece of the oligarchs. They're a propaganda machine. 
And the, and this is what is exonerating Joe Biden, according to Joe himself. Now, plus, uh, Biden says he doesn't remember Tara. He doesn't remember any complaints being thrown against him. And if there was a complaint, there'd be a record of it. Um, and uh, because he can't remember Tara, then, you know, then it probably didn't happen. Yeah, the guy that's, that clearly has dementia can't remember something and we're supposed to take him on his word. That's the best excuse that Joe Biden has right now to prove his innocence. Joe Biden can't remember what he had for dinner yesterday. And he's like, well, you know, I don't remember. Case closed. I feel like that's all the evidence that we need. Are we done, Mika? Can we get out? How do we turn off these lights? Is there a way? Do I clap? Is it a clap situation? Now, he talks about these records, um, which uh, exist in, in um, basically they're being held by the University of Delaware. And the University of Delaware is refusing to release these records until Joe Biden is out of public office. And there's a couple different ways you can get around that, right? Um, and, and Mika points this out. She was like, why don't you do a word search in these records to see if Tara's name would point would come up? And Joe's like, what? What are you fucking talking Word search? That's crazy. Can we do that? Is that a thing? Can you actually search for words? How do you do that? How do you search? Do we have this kind of technology? How, how are we doing this? And it's such bullshit because there's so much hypocrisy in all the shit that he says, right? Because then he calls for transparency. He's like, yes, I believe that everything should be transparent. We should be as open about this investigation as we possibly can. This should be a transparent investigation. We should release, but, but we can't, we can't release those records. We cannot, those records are within the, in, within the university of Delaware. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it is, maybe it's not something with the Senate, uh, but we can't release those. What, what? Why? Why can't we release? Because there might be things in there that I said that that might not be favorable to me. I might have said certain things that are not very nice uh, and uh, kind of go against the people that I'm lying to on a constant basis. And then when those lies get exposed and I'm running for president, that's not going to look good. That's literally what he said. He was like, oh, so things can be taken out of context. You know, I met with Putin. Oh, he's a Putin puppet. He met with Putin when he was the VP. He's a puppet. He is a puppet. It's just like, really? Like, things are getting taken out of context and you can't provide the full context? Of course he can't. He's doing an abysmal job of fucking uh, defending himself on, an, on MSNBC, which is basically like the DNC fucking mouthpiece. <laughs> Yeah, let's look at what your record has. If if it's if it's as fucking terrible as all the shit that's already out there, where your crime bill that put more black people in prison, or the fact that you voted for an unnecessary illegal war, or that you treated Anita Hill like shit, or that you literally said that you would refuse Medicare for all in the face of a global pandemic, that you that you are for bailing out the banks than you are for helping working class people. And Nancy Pelosi comes out and she's like, no, she, he understands the plight of, of poverty. You know, his, his dad lost his job. He was poor for a while. You know, he understands. He understands what that's, what that's like. And that's why he's bailing out the banks. That's why he suckles at the teats of the plutocracy. Anytime somebody brings up these records and why nobody is trying to get these records out and making them public to prove that Biden is innocent. And by the way, they're also just like, if Tara's name is not in these records, then that's proof enough, right? Which that, but that, that doesn't prove anything. That, that means that somebody could have um, not filed the records properly. Uh, she was moved to some like arbitrary office at one point um, that there's like virtually no record of. Uh, just to like get her away from people. They might have not filed her complaint. You know, there's a lot of different things that could go wrong. That's why it need, there needs to be like a legitimate investigation, not just, well, New York Times 
and the Washington Post talked to a guy we think had something to, he had lunch with Joe Biden in 93 at one point, And he said, Joe's great. He ordered the tuna fish. That's, I feel, uh, rapists don't order tuna fish. You know, that's a fact. I think everybody knows that. How do we know that? Oh, because it's in the New York Times. Every time that these records are brought up, every single Democrat, every single Democrat that's been talked, that, that talks to um, any sort of corporate news outlet freaks the fuck out. Nancy Pelosi freaked out. Stacey Abrams freaked out. Joe Biden is even freaking out. Like he's losing his shit in the middle of this interview. They just get angry and pouty and then they, they're just like Trump. And we got to beat Trump. We got to beat this guy. So you can't, you can't bring up credible allegations against somebody that we think should be Trump. Everybody goes, well, why did it take so long for her to, to come out? This happened in 93. Well, look at how we're treating her now, right? When Joe Biden, there's, there, there's a large contingent of people, um, uh, that kind of don't like Joe Biden right now, <clears throat> that don't believe that Joe Biden is the right candidate. I'm one of them. I don't like Joe Biden. I'm not a big fan of the guy, right? And his popularity is a lot lower than it was in 93. And look at how we're treating her now. Had she done that in 93 when his popularity was a little bit higher, when people actually liked Joe Biden a little bit more and thought he was a good guy and a fair and impartial person? She would have been fucking destroyed. There would be like virtually no, no chance for her. She would have probably become a pariah like Monica Lewinsky was when, when Clinton was happening. And look at the way that Biden even treats these allegations, even like the smaller ones, right? The ones where um, it's... Uh, hey, you lingered on a hug, you sniffed my hair, and you held me too, way too close up against you. And he didn't even apologize. He literally came out and was just like, things change. I like to touch people. And all of a sudden, they're telling me I can't touch people? With that, I just, I just want to hold on to people. You know, I just got to hold them to let them know that I love them and I will control them because I love them. And that's great. I don't even think this is like he never said sorry. He was just like, things are different now. Never. I'm sorry I made anybody feel uncomfortable. That's not the goal that I had. If I did, I'm, you know, I, I didn't see my actions properly. This is the best option that the DNC can throw out at us. And they crucify people that are like, hey, we should take these allegations seriously and do like real investigation like real investigation to this. And they're calling to have people that call that out fired. <laughs> this might not be a popular opinion, um, but I feel like it's an important opinion to, to state. And I think it, I think it, you know, a lot more of us need to, to understand this is America is in the shape that we're in because we constantly are ready to vote for the lesser evil and constantly doing it over and over again. Right. We, we justify voting for evil all the time. We're just ready to give up our belief systems and vote for the lesser evil all the time. That's why we're in the shape that we're in. We make these concessions all the time. This is what people do whenever this vote for your vote for the lesser evil argument. This is what people do with their belief system. They go like this. That was your belief systems. You just crumple it up and you fucking throw it away. This the shape of this country is where it is because we keep compromising our own belief systems so that the rich don't, so that people like Joe Biden don't. They're not held accountable for their shit. They're not even remotely close to being held accountable for their shit. We're, we're supposed to back... <laughs> our, the shape of this country is the way that it is because the Democratic Party is asking us to back the lesser of two alleged rapists. 
And I guess it's quantity over quality, right? Joe didn't Joe didn't do this to to multiple people, so he's better. And then we wonder, boy, why are corporations taking over all of the things, all of our basic needs? Boy, what are we? Why are we profit? Why are we adding a profit margin to human life? It's because we back people like this. Even Chomsky is doing it. Chomsky's been talking about voting for the lesser evil for the better part of two decades. And I like Noam Chomsky. I'm a, I'm a Noam Chomsky fan. I think he's on point with manufacturing consent. I think he's on point with the way that he talks about corporatism, right? But he's not on point when he talks about voting for the lesser of two evils. I disagree with him. I think that's a bad idea. If this election is as important as what people say it is, then why is voting for evil the solution? Why is voting for evil always the solution? Every election is the most important election we've ever seen in our entire lives. And we have to compromise what we believe in. We have to compromise our ethics. We have to compromise our basic needs. Just so the lesser can get in. How about we vote for good? How about we find what we believe in? How about we find the ideas that we're willing to support? And we support the people that believe in those ideas. And, and move forward that way. Because at this point, they don't have any reason not to make any compromises on their own behalf. To come out and give you some fucking lip service like Joe Biden does. Right? Oh, I, I b believe all women. Okay. Well, there's this lady that's saying that she's, that you sexually assaulted her. Except her. Don't believe her. All women but the ones that say anything against me. And everybody just goes, well, that's that seems right. The more we keep doing that, the more they are going to compromise what we need and take more away from us. Who are we compromising for? We're compromising for the elites. We're compromising for the corporate oligarchy. That's what we're compromising. That's what we've been compromising for. Republicans and Democrats together have been compromising that shit. Maybe we stop. Maybe we don't do that anymore. All right, let's see what you guys have to say. John Sheehan. John Sheehan's watching. Uh, if I'm a heavy metal fan, do I have to become a red Republican now? I think you do. I think you do. Because that is the color of the devil. Heavy metal is the soundtrack of the devil. Uh, and I don't think you have an option, John. I think you're you are now a card carrying, uh, double neck guitar wearing uh, Republican, because we all know Republicans love that double neck guitar. Big fans of those double neck guitars uh, and sweet sweet solos, sweet sweet solos. Uh, and really, if we know something about the the Republicans, big fans of the devil, big big fans of the devil. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? If you enjoyed this video, there is more stuff like this coming on this channel. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell icon to make sure you're getting updates about my videos. Make sure you hit that like button because uh, I think there's a dislike campaign happening on my channel. There's like one person that's just disliking all my shit. That's weird. Uh, but uh, make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the share button. Get the word out about this channel. Uh, and there are going to be more videos like this. But if you enjoy this video and you want to be a part of the live comedy experience in this virtual world that we're living in now, uh, where, uh, where all the performance art is going virtual uh, for the time being, you can join my Zoom live stand-up comedy shows. It's called the Citizen Revolution Comedy Show. Uh, the first one is on May 8th, uh, and they will be consecutively every other week. All of the dates are available on my website right now, ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com. Go grab your tickets right now. They're only five bucks. Five bucks gets you in, um, and it's five bucks per residence, not five bucks per person. Uh, it's just to grab you a spot. Uh, so go to my website, ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com. Grab your ticket. Come hang out with me. Uh, if you can, you can become a sustaining member over on the website. Sustaining members get free tickets uh, to come see the Zoom virtual Citizen Revolution comedy show. Um, or you can make a one-time donation as well. 
but all of this stuff helps keep me afloat, uh, keeps me uh, being able to put food on the table uh, and cover all of my bills and expenses uh, to make sure that I'm putting out regular content. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for subscribing. Hope to see you again. Stay safe.